How to use JavaScript in Articulate Storyline 360. Hello, you beautiful people. Today, we're delving into the basics of using JavaScript within Articulate Storyline 360. I'm Mahesh Umakat Naidu, and if you haven't checked out my YouTube channel already, you can find more resources at youtube.com slash at Interactive Minecrafters. This link will be there in the description below. Feel free to explore my previous tutorials, blog posts, and full training sessions covering everything from A to Z, as well as download templates. However, today's focus is on getting started with JavaScript inside Storyline. It is going to be exciting, believe me. Specifically covering the basics and how to work with JavaScript inside Storyline. So let's dive into Storyline and discuss how to start getting accustomed to working with JavaScript, especially pulling out information from Storyline to JavaScript and pushing information back from JavaScript to Storyline. Okay, so let's dive in here. And we've got a um, <clears throat> articulate file open. And this is a variable. This is a variable that I just created. And this variable contains 27, uh, just a random number. And uh, how I did that was I just uh, I just recreated again. Uh, I just went right here. If you look at this particular box, it says manage project variables. Just click on that. And then you get the entire variable list. Uh, you, you get built-in lists and you get the project list. Uh, project list is whatever remains in the project that you have created. Now, I created this one over here and uh, I just named it as variable num1. The type of this is a number. The default value I, I created is uh, 27. Use count is how many times it's been used in uh, the project. So I'll just go back over here. Now, how we got this over here is that uh, all you have to do is you go and insert, say, a text box. Okay, you just insert a text box over here, right? Click on the text box. Okay, and then go back to insert. All right, and then you have something like uh, a reference, FX reference over here. Now, when you say insert a reference, it gives you the same variable box that I kind of showed you <clears throat> just previously. So you click on whatever variable that you want to display over there. You click on that, and then it kind of uh, pulls it out of here and displays it. So there you go. And then there's a lot of formatting that needs to be done, which I've done over here. Um, all you have to do is just click on this and then go to format over here and then you can do a lot of stuff you can kind of uh, you know wait uh, just go to home for the <clears throat> character size okay and then you just adjust it however you want right it's on to the side right now on the side align and uh, left side align I'm just gonna center it so this is exactly how you do it all right, now let's go back to the main variable. These two boxes are exactly what it says. Now, this is just a square, I mean, sorry, a rectangle, uh, which I created, which we will turn into a button. When I say button is, uh, we're gonna make it clickable. And when someone clicks on this, it gets the variable into JS. So let me just write that over there into JS. So what I mean is, um, so JS pulls this variable into itself, like into the code. So it pulls 27 into the code and then you can set the variable in JS to be something else, like say 48, 50, 60, whatever you want, right? And then that, that function, sorry, that uh, is what happens over here when you click it. So this is exactly what we're supposed to do with JavaScript. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and see how we can put some code into the boxes over there, making it a button. So um, what I'll do right now is I'll just create another box over here, just to give you an example of how JavaScript is going to be included into these buttons and how they're going to be executed. Just an example, just for you to understand how uh, things are going to be. I don't want to 
or confuse you by putting it in these uh, boxes over here. I just want to make a separate box and I just want to show you the functionality of that particular box and let's see how we can go from there. All right, so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to just insert a shape. Now I'm just going to go with what you would know about Article 8 Storyline. I'm not going to go right through the basics and, and then talk about the navigation bar and things like that. I can't do that right now because of the lack of time and uh, also that the focus of this particular session video is about JavaScript. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to insert a shape, all right, which will just, you know, look like a button just the same way it is this is the same way that i kind of created the other buttons i'm just gonna so what i'm gonna do is right now created this and then i'm just going to edit so you right click over here and you can edit text or you can actually insert a, a text box and then do that and then you have separate text in, in that particular thing. But I wouldn't do that because I, I want to make sure the text is inside the box. So I'm just going to go into the box and the box has a, a property that says edit text. And so when I do that, I can write whatever I want. So I'll just say a test. I'm just going to say test just to test that particular button if it's working fine with JavaScript. Now, what I would do is I'm going to click on this button and then obviously if all the storyline users know that um, in order to make something do something, you kind of create a trigger. So you kind of create a trigger over here which says create a new trigger, but you have to have that selected. And we have so storyline keeps evolving and there's so many things in the action menu that that i will cover in my later courses there's a lot to cover but right now we're just going to go and look at the javascript execution function so just look at all the functions over here and then you'll find something that says execute javascript right so this one over here is the one which we click on and once we do that, it kind of says action, execute JavaScript, and the JavaScript window. When you click on that, you get a JavaScript window. So this is a JavaScript editor where you can put all the JavaScript, whatever code that you want, you can dump here. Now, what I would like to say is that you don't need to really know JavaScript a lot. You just need to know the basics in the sense that you need to know that the, the functions and what and how things are done. You don't have to really become an expert in it. You can just make sure that you know what comes after and what comes before and how to create things. That's about it. And that, that's, we, that's what we're going to cover over here. And when you look at particular places where you need to actually create something, it's always that code is always floating around somewhere where you can actually recognize it. Yeah, that's the main part of it, recognizing the code so that you can reuse the code. The entire world is reusing code right now. So please do not be ashamed or, you know, that you don't know how to create your own code and things like that. No, it's that everybody's using the same code. It's just that how you manipulate the code and how you create it for your own use. So over here, we have this particular editor where we kind of create, I mean, sorry, I, I, we, we kind of dump all the JavaScript. I'm just going to give you a small little function, okay, which we will create right now. It's called alert, all right? So what alert does is that uh, whatever function, uh, whatever value, value that we're going to give this particular uh, function it's going to throw back at us once we click the object that it is referring to the object being the button so now i'm just going to say say alert and uh, this is going to pop up a message which says uh, whatever you want in this particular thing it's saying i love articulate storyline 
All right. So you can you can put whatever you want inside the quotes. So this is one particular thing. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say okay. So now it's going to execute. So look at the trigger wizard over here. It says action execute JavaScript. That's what we took in JavaScript. It has the window when we click on this, right? It has that particular thing. Okay. And then it asks you when. So this is the normal trigger wizard that we use for everything in Storyline. When the user clicks, so we're just going to leave it as click. Object, what object is it referring to? And what object triggers the JavaScript when it is clicked? That is, the user clicks. So it's, uh, it's, um, Articulate kind of makes it a little more understandable um, for the non-programming world. Obviously, if you're a programmer, you, you'll get this and you're going to be, it's going to be streamlined for you. So you can also add conditions over here, but that we'll get into later, right? Right now, we're just going to look at execute JavaScript, JavaScript, when the user clicks, right? what, what object the user is clicking. Now I'm just going to say, okay. The only thing over here is that um, I can't preview this. So because if I say preview, it's not going to do anything because JavaScript is a kind of a third party kind of a thing. And it needs what do you call an um, so uh, Articulate has a web browser, but it doesn't uh, execute external JavaScript commands. So what you really need to do is uh, so it says JavaScript uh, support is not available while previewing. So what you actually do here is that you have to uh, publish this, right? You can publish it any way you want. You can publish it on the web. You can publish in the review. I'll just publish it on the web, okay? And I'm just going to publish it just normally. I'm just going to say publish and then just give it a moment and it gives you a particular, you can actually email it if, zip file FTP open now what I'm going to do is just view the product uh, pro project let's just see what happens okay and it gives me where I'll just say just once just in case you know I need other browsers now okay now it should work all right so this is the way it uh, previews the browser so when I click on these two Nothing is in it, so it doesn't become a button. Now, when I say test over here, when I click this, it page says, I love Articulate Storyline. So it, the pop-up works and the JavaScript executes once it's published. So this is exactly what JavaScript does. And this is how we kind of create buttons that execute JavaScript in any way possible. And there are three, you just have to know there are three types of elements over here. That's HTML, okay, JavaScript, and CSS. Okay, CSS is cascading style sheets, which by the way is used for design, designing a web page or anything that is related to HTML or other languages. So what happens over here is that HTML is something that gives structure. Let's look at the web page for now as the object. Now HTML, referring to a web page, gives a structure to the web page. And then JavaScript creates the behavior of what happens in that web page. Say the button, if it clicks what executes and what can be manipulated and pushed back and things like that. And then CSS, it, it's, it refers only to design. Okay, there are a lot of things that can be done to CSS, it has evolved. But the thing is that CSS is, when you say CSS, it refers to design of the web page and how it looks and how pretty it looks and how the colors are and things like that. So the manipulation over there is used in design only in CSS. So that's exactly how it works. Uh, just let us push the real values of uh, JavaScript into these buttons where it gets the variable into JavaScript and sets the variable to something else and then pushes it back into this reference over here. So this is exactly what we're going to do and how we're going to manipulate 
this uh, code. I can take this out because we don't need this now. It was just something that I created so that you understand how things work. Okay, so now I just want to let you know that uh, there are a lot of resources available for uh, JavaScript. I'll just show you one of them, which is uh, W3Schools. W3Schools also has HTML, CSS, as well as our very own JavaScript. JavaScript over here has everything, pretty much everything. It's kind of a tutorial, but with a do-it-yourself kind of framework where you have to try it yourself and see if you get it right. And mostly it's usually uh, out of memory that you kind of have to remember all these things and how they actually created and things like that. So it's all about how you know the commands and know where to put it and things like that to build any function. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just go back to Storyline and we'll look at how we can. So what we've done now is we've created an alert which uh, pops up a dialog box which gives you um, what the alert specified. I've not, I've taken out that box uh, because it was just a dummy just to let you know how to how exactly JavaScript works. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create these into buttons and for that as mentioned before we're going to use say triggers. We have to use triggers and we've already got execute JavaScript as the action. I'll just go through the menu once again. It's right over here. So you execute JavaScript and this is the JavaScript that you need to execute. Uh, sorry, this is the JavaScript editor where we will execute the JavaScript code. Okay, so let's put the code in now. All right, so that's let player equal to get player and parenthesis semicolon. Let's paste that out. When I'm talking about the player, I'm talking about the storyline player. We're going to put an alert over here and then we're going to get the variable all right so we're going to say get bar and then we're going to double quote from there and we're going to put the variable name i can't remember the variable name i think it is variable num one okay so variable num one all right so we're gonna look at Okay, let's just so we have alert and the alert is clear that get variable, which is the variable which you're looking at, which is uh, the one that has 27 in it as the value. And I'm just gonna when user clicks rectangle one, okay, that's what when it triggers, right? When the user clicks rectangle one, all right. So let's just publish this because you know why we have to publish when. Uh, there is JavaScript involved. Now let's just publish to web. Okay, once this is done, we say you view the project. And obviously you'll just get the same thing, which is 27 in the alert. And I'm just gonna click on it. Okay, so it's not working. Let's see what went wrong. All right, let's just go to the code and double click on that. We go to JavaScript and see what the problem is over here. Okay, so we got the problem over here. Now we we have to understand. I mean, I have to understand right now because I made the mistake that when there is a parenthesis, it always has to be ending in the same way, in the sense that the number of parentheses that these oh god brackets. I'm going to just say brackets, all right? The number of brackets that you start with, you end with, all right? So it has to be equal. So we have get Okay, so the player, it starts with the bracket and it ends with the bracket. Okay, fine. Now we look at after this get var, we have another one, but it doesn't end. It doesn't have an ending. So we got to end that over there. And hopefully this works because, well, it has to. So alert player dot get var. 
the variable name, get variable, variable name, and then it ends over there. And then we have, a. Uh, let's see. Okay, semicolon. Now let's just, just check it again. All right, I'm gonna publish it. We're going to, okay, I'm just doing all these things just that so you know, um, there can be mistakes in my editing anything. Uh, I'm not editing out anything. All right, so these are the mistakes we all usually make. It's not just you or me, it's everybody. So when you click on this, there you go. This page says 27. So that was the problem and now we have 27. That still doesn't um, get us to set the variable because we have to change it in this particular place over here. So I'm just gonna close this, okay? And uh, I'm just gonna go back. Okay, now let's start, uh, let's just put the other code over here, all right? Now we have this code over here. Let's just take it, I'll just, um, Oh, I didn't have two of these. Mm. Okay. Anywho, whenever we have two, it's always the first one that uh, executes. Uh, that That's how it's, um, even in layers, the first one executes and then the next one then executes. So if, whenever you're de debugging a, a storyline, articulate storyline, you need to also take that into consideration because you might have everything going the way you want it to go and then suddenly you you, you hit this particular uh, bug and uh, you, you need to understand then that the layering has to be amended for it to work. Anyway, so I just wanted to see if this is, um, what is this, alert variable data? No, I don't want this. Cancel this. Okay, so this can disable the trigger. This can disable the trigger. Let me just check what this is. Okay, just the alert. Okay. So this didn't fire. Okay, whatever happened over here, it didn't fire because I think um, it didn't. Uh, um, okay, there were a lot of uh, mistakes over here. So th this didn't fire. Because this didn't fire, all right, this fired, all right? So, sorry, it's because this didn't fire, because of some uh, brackets missing, this one fired, all right? So I'm gonna just delete this, and I hope I deleted the correct one. All right, so yeah, this is the one which fired, all right? So let's just keep this the way it is right now. Um, let's uh, also, let's just take it so that we, can put it in this one. So we're going from here to here, all right? Let's put a trigger over here, okay? Now, once we put a trigger here, okay, we're gonna just paste this over here. Just paste it just so that it is, all right? And uh, we'll amend this so that the variable is set inside 27, okay? And um, it can be manipulated also. So let's do that. All right, so what we're gonna do now is that we've already got this variable into JavaScript, which holds the value 27. The variable name is variable num1. Now, what we're gonna do in the second button over here is we're going to see how we can set that particular variable, say maybe that variable plus or minus a number, which will give you a particular a final number and then we're gonna push it back into um, variable num1. Thus, manipulating the data and pushing it back into storyline. So that's the goal right now. Now, the first part of this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out if it really works. So we're gonna actually put an alert function just to make sure it works um, and then see if the format is correct and uh, things like that. And then we'll try to push it into the variable, the final variable, which is uh, variable num1. So we're gonna focus on this button over here, and uh, we've already got the JavaScript code, half of it, that is, and we're gonna remove one. So what we're gonna do right now is that we cannot keep repeating this every time, all right? So this particular line command over here, okay, 
um, we, we're going to take this and we're going to put it into a variable so that we can shorten it. So this entire thing, the first bracket and the last bracket is of the alert function. So we don't need that. All right. So what we're going to do is first we're going to create a variable. Okay. Let's just say that uh, let variable variable data data as in the whole um, is equal to and that particular player dot get for variable num one. Okay. So we have this. All right. And so we don't need this. But we're going to try to alert it first before we're going to um, push it into storyline. So we're going to alert it first so that we don't have any uh, problems like, you know, semicolon, forgetting semicolons and brackets and things like that. So we say let variable data, which is the entire data, is equal to that particular variable num, which the player will get for us, which also is this particular value of here, which is 27. Now, what we're going to do is we're trying to get another variable. Please don't get confused right now. We just, <laughs> we're going to first put this particular data, which is 27, okay, into variable data. All right. Now, you'll understand this once I've finished. Now, we're going to get another variable, which is called updated. All right. Updated num1. Okay. Which is the updated variable num1 all right so we're gonna act what are we gonna do in this so we're gonna let updated num1 equal to now we're gonna take this variable data okay this variable data okay all right plus okay say a hundred or a thousand or ten thousand I'll just take to hundred don't forget the semicolon okay now let's just see if this works okay so we have three lines of code over here i'll explain this again let player equal get player now that is talking about the storyline player all right so we're getting the storyline player the next line is let variable data which is a variable in itself variable data it is holding the value player dot get var variable num one that is it's holding the value of this 27 which is the variable uh, num1 now what we're going to do is we're trying to manipulate uh, manipulate uh, uh, this 27 which is variable num1 and put it into a variable called updated num1 all right so this is the final manipulated data now the, what are we going to manipulate over here updated num1 is equal to this variable data okay which is over here plus 100 Okay, so what we're going to get is this variable data, which we already know is 27, all right, is going to be, say, uh, 127, all right? So that's, that's what's uh, going to happen. But for now, we're not going to change uh, the variable over there. We're just going to check if it works by hitting the famous alert function all right and so we're going to alert what we're going to alert this particular thing to check whether the uh, variable has been manipulated that is updated num1 should be variable data this variable data over here which is 27 plus 100 which is 127 so alert what again uh updated num. i'm just going to copy and paste because we're all lazy all right and don't forget the semicolon Okay, so this looks good. Okay, and I'm just gonna say okay over here and let's just see how this works. Now we're going to publish this as normal and we're gonna view it in the browser. Okay, so now we're gonna view this in the browser and what's gonna happen? I just hope there are no mistakes. Now this one gets variable into JS. Okay, so it just alerts the variable that is, it says that 27 is in that particular uh, variable number one, sorry, variable num one. And this one should set the variable, the updated variable, which is gonna be 127 because it's variable data plus 100. 
and variable data is this particular 27. Now let's just click on this and see if it's one. Yeah, we got 127 now. So this is exactly how it's going to work. Now is the main goal that is to push this 127 into variable num1. Okay, so it works. So always try to put an alert to check if it works before you manipulate the entire data, which is the goal. Okay, so we're going to go back over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the code. And instead of this alert, which was a temporary measure to figure out whether it works or not, instead of this, we're going to use um, the word set there. Okay, that is set variable. Now you have get variable over here, which gets the data and the set variable, which sets the data in the sense that it sets it into um, the, the variable. So it changes the data and sets it into a variable. Now, well, how are we going to use this? It's the same thing as uh, player.get bar. What we're going to do over here is now we have the updated num is equal to variable data plus 100. All right, we're not going to alert it. Like I said before, we're going to create something Okay, which will change the variable uh, data, I'm sorry, variable num, which is uh, variable num1, into the updated num1, all right? Now, since this variable num1 over here, okay, is <clears throat> the first variable over here, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to say player dot set var, Okay, what we had before was get var. Now we're going to set var, all right? Set var. And we're going to have two pieces of information over here, separated by a comma, all right? And this first piece of information is this variable over here. I'm just going to take the entire thing, copy it, and paste it. And then, without any quotes, we're going to paste this updated num1, okay? All right, so since it's with a constant, that is 100. Um, so what we're going to do over here is we're going to just put this here, just like this. Okay, so and then we're going to end it with a semicolon. Okay, so this is exactly how you change the variable, okay, into the updated value all right and then we push it into the variable number one i'm going to say okay and just let's um, publish this okay now let's just publish this and see hopefully it works let's do this okay so now we've got the value which is it shows the value of what variable num1 is, okay, and it's an alert, so it's not changing anything. Now, when we set variable in JS, what we've set it to is, uh, if you recall, it's the updated num1 is equal to variable data, which holds the entire command, plus 100. So, we have to get 127 as the answer, uh, not answer, uh, this entire variable will change to 127. And there you go. Okay, so this is exactly how you pull variables from a place, okay, into JavaScript, manipulate it, do whatever you want, and then push it back again. Now, the best part is this is just the beginning because I have a lot of um, courses coming up. Um, basically, the next course would be something to do with manipulating data right in a 3d environment where we can use the variables from a storyline and then manipulate a third party variable and then pull that third party variable into storyline so what we're doing right now is uh, manipulating variables that are inside storyline but what i've been working on is that you manipulate a variable outside storyline and you pull that variable into storyline where storyline can measure and uh, create whatever it wants um, so basically it's it's uh, it's a really powerful method of uh, working with variables outside storyline so it's uh, and pulling them in 
So this is exactly how it is. And uh, I'm so glad that you've come to this part and I'm really happy that you've gone through this entire thing because JavaScript is such a beautiful behavior, um, changing, manipulating uh, um, tool that you can actually use to create so many things like, you know, like um, transitions, like tilts, like lighting, like there's so many things that you can actually do with uh, with uh, JavaScript that it, it needs more courses um, to be made to actually show you. But this is exactly what I've been working on. And I will be working on this for quite a while because there's so much to push out and editing and uh, creating these videos take a lot of time so please 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 subscribe and uh, that helps me create these videos and uh, edit them and it takes a quite a while to do this so that it can bring to you what new things that we can do uh, in the world of storyline and storyline is not just uh, a closed platform platform it's a beautiful platform it's an open platform it's something that you can actually manipulate and bring it into that open uh, state of mind and uh, that's what I love about Storyline and I just want you to understand that please subscribe and uh, please um, like this video if you think it's really helped you thank you so much